Um, I know it's difficult for you to revisit the sounds of horror, uh, the death everywhere. But can you just tell us how you survived the war time and reach Zagreb? Basically, I know it was like quite difficult for you to leave your home behind and then go to a new city and get adjusted there. But how this all happened? Like how you basically adjusted there? Now, I think first how I got here is probably quite interesting. Um, I think when you said difficult to leave at that stage, you know, when we under normal circumstances, I'm, I'm a, they call me the cricketing nomad. I, I've been all over the world playing cricket. Um, you know, I was in Kenya with the cricket Kenya there. I was in Dubai when I had the academy with Ashwin. I, I played professional cricket for 11 years in the UK. I played in Scotland. So I've, I've been really, I've been, I've been. Um, living in in about i think it's now 12 countries and usually when you move it is very difficult you know you're leaving friends behind you're leaving uh, your you know om almost your life behind but this time was completely different because of the circumstances you know you you the minute i got into i managed to get a ride in a car with my dogs after 10 days to get out of kiev and i tell you i've never felt so good leaving a place. I love Kiev with a passion. I, I had a life there for four years. Um, I was director of a private Ukrainian school. Aster, I was CEO, well I'm still CEO of Ukrainian cricket. But that day when we left and the further I got out of Kiev and the further away I got from the actual war sounds, the explosions and that, it was just such a sense of relief. Um, it was just a, a, it's a feeling of escape. And, and yeah, and then you ask in, in Zagreb, um, I settle down pretty easily. What I do when I move to a new place, I completely embrace the, the culture. And you know who taught me that? Um, a guy that's very close to India, I believe. John T. Rhodes is a very good friend of mine. And John T. told me when he goes to India, even when he was a young cricketer, the team would go there. A lot of the other guys would sit around the hotel room. But John T. would always be out and about. He'll get a little scooter and he goes out. He eats the local food. He goes and surf in the little local, small little surf spots in India and he absolutely embraces the culture and, and I do that. When I was in Dubai, I used to go to the mosque with some of my friends. Uh, I ate with my hand, uh, we'd eat the, the, the food, the local dishes in Dubai with them. So I'm doing the same here. I've absolutely uh, settled down here. Um, it's very different. Uh, even from Ukraine, it's different. Um, uh, it's more Mediterranean, it, the culture here is much more relaxed, laid back. Uh, they've got the beautiful Croatian islands here, about a two hour drive from Zagreb where I am. And I've been about twice now, I've taken the dogs to the car and we went to spend some time on the islands. And it's very much like a Greek, sort of Greek island kind of setup here. And, and I've embraced it, I love it. In the evenings they've got outside concerts here in the park. I go to these, I attend all these concerts. Um, in the daytime, it's very much a shopping, uh, a, a, a coffee shop culture. People sit, it reminds me a lot of Amsterdam. I was in Amsterdam for four years working for the Dutch cricket board. So I go and sit on these little street cafes and I you sit with a little coffee Americano and you watch the people. Unfortunately, I can't read the newspaper. I, 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 don't, I can't speak Croatian, but I sit at the coffee shops in the day. That's become sort of my routine. And then afternoons, I run my little cricket program for the Ukrainian refugees in Zagreb.